Well, I'll start in honor of uh, uh, d having some flight issues getting back. I'll give a little injury update. Just on a couple guys here. Uh, D offered kind of be day to day. Uh, we'll see how it goes this week with D. Um, Hawk will be out. He's in the protocol. He'll be out this week. Um, and then AJ, you know, decent news, but it's probably more week to week. As far as that's a lot of secondary guys down. How do it you is. how do you go about replacing that? Do you need to bring somebody? Well, we got faith in a lot of our guys that are here. Uh, the way we've tried to develop guys that have been in our program, and uh, it's our job to find solutions. Everybody's dealing with something around the league, and we got to find solutions. And because we got a big divisional game coming up here Sunday, is there? A, do you feel like at this point you would need to bring somebody? Just from a pure number standpoint, we would have to bring someone in from. Outside. Well, I mean, if you you're dealing with a bunch of long term issues, you probably feel. That would be the case. Uh, we feel pretty confident in the guys that we have in-house, and we'll just see how the week goes. How, how much did A.J. going down after eight plays? And Darren had said that part of the plan was to have him maybe follow Jamar a little bit. How much did that alter what you guys were trying to do? Yeah, I mean, that's what happens in games. I mean, everybody's dealing with something. It's the National Football League. We knew going in that game that uh, we knew what, you know, wasn't any secret what their strengths were, and they did a nice job executing, and uh, we didn't early. Um, and you get yourself in a hole like that, and then it's our, you know, you got to adapt. And um, as bad as the game started, you had a little bit of life in the end of the second quarter, and credit to Cincy. When you get yourself in a hole like that, uh, you got to be damn near perfect to make a comeback on a good team, and, and th that's on us. And then obviously, Cincy had a say in it, and you're kind of a pitch behind. This is certainly what it feels like. And, uh, and they did a nice job in the second half, and they closed us out, and we can do a lot of things better. Week to week, and that would mean Richie maybe being the only starter and Jalen being out as the only day one starter. How much does having Dean and, yeah, and, and Eric maybe lessen some of this a little bit for you? Guys? Yeah, it's what uh, you know the strategy behind some of the roster building, and then the way you try to develop guys that are on your P squad and uh, guys that have been in your program, so they know your system, so you're not you know, been a part of things. It's one thing I do appreciate about the new roster rules. I, you know, I can think back to 2014 at the end of the year and. Uh, we have two games left, bad season, and, you know, we try to get Matt Mulligan and Jordan Palmer ready for a, a week six, 16 barn burner uh, Jags-Titans Thursday night game before Christmas. And then, you know, it's the way it goes. And, you're, you know, two days you're trying to get a guy ready to play. It's a snap away. Uh, fortunately, we don't have to do that. And uh, so we'll see how the week goes. And we got to, you know, obviously adjust and make sure we got a good plan and because uh, we got a good challenge with Carolina coming in. You got done early getting that negative game script. Was it tempting to try to get away from the run a little bit more at that point in time? Yeah, it was, and that's what you're always trying to balance because um, there's some things that we, you know we can do a better job of, and we'll continue to evolve. Um, and I, and that's that's a challenge, you know. That's uh, that's what I love about the league. We got ten games left. We're right in the middle of it. Uh, the good news is that only that's only counts for one loss. You know, as bad as it feels on Monday when you lose, that's why I'm always talking about perspective. When you win, too, you got to have the same focus. Um, yeah, I mean, if you try to get it all back at once, there can be some severe unintended consequences. You don't want to put your defense right back out there in a quick three and out. And uh, so it felt pretty good. That's why we had that long drive where, where Tyler scored. Obviously, in the two-minute, we got the start of the series. We were able to get the explosive. Um, and then we just never got anything going, you know, the start of the series in the third quarter. Uh, when you had a chance to get momentum, it was, like I said, it was something here or there, and we can do a better job, and that's starting with me. I know you get frustrated with the targets question. Or, so we, sure. know, we I know mean, they're good questions. I mean, I understand. Sure, no, I, I mean, we know you're targeting Kyle, right? It, right. But, but the results aren't bearing themselves Correct. out. So what can you do? Is Do you need to simplify things for Marcus? Is it easy to make it for him for him to get more production? No, I understand that, and that's a good question. And that's our job as coaches, right? I mean, you get certain game plans at work, like you get into San Francisco, and it's like a heavyweight fight, and we got the lead, so you're kind of hammering some more runs in there. Um, we'll certainly look at everything. We got to get it, uh, find ways to get guys involved uh, earlier. And, you know, we certainly threw a screen to them and feel like you got something there, but uh, Bates makes a play, and it's, it's nothing, you know? And that's, that's the key is, is making sure we continue to evolve too. And we will, and that's the that's the charge. That's what I've always believed in. And like I said, it's it's not one person, it's not one coach. It all starts with me. And there's a lot of things we can do better. We will. Like I said, we're right in the middle of it. That 
three and four, not where we want to be, but the reality is there's a long season ahead of us and we got an opportunity to win a division game. Um, certainly we'll look at everything. I mean, when, you, when you're not, you know, a lot of times it, guys can be the primary and yeah, they take it away. Okay, I can, I can shorten the targets down. Certainly the second play of the, of the, uh, of the second half, you know, you target Drake, doesn't go as a target, we get moved off the spot, he comes open. And uh, you know we got to be cleaner executing there, but th those are examples. Of like, yes, there are other things we can do, and it's not just simplify. I know that words get thrown out there a lot, uh, for better or worse. Um, there's other things we can do, and I will do. That's probably the simplest, best way I can put it. To. Talking about getting guys involved early, this is you know a few times now that this team has gotten down in a mm -hmm. hole to start games off on the road. What's the messaging about changing that idea and moving forward and starting quicker? Yeah, they've been different, right? The first drive, um, we get the ball against the Rams, right? We took the ball down the field, and then we um, – a couple negative plays, we missed the kick, right? And then they go down and score, uh, get ourselves in the hole there a little bit. And, you know, obviously uh, wasn't very good in the first half. And so that's kind of the way that game started. Then you get down to Tampa. First drive, nothing. Second drive, you hit an explosive, but you know there's a penalty, and then you just kind of stagnant. Got a chance before the half. Almost identical to the first drive to LA. So these games are a little bit different story. There's obviously things we need to do better than uh, this past week. You know what what happened yesterday, getting down. Uh, you know we're down 21 nothing pretty quick. So there's a lot of things we'll evaluate, the things that we can do better in every phase, and uh, we will. Yeah, for sure. When you, you, I, last week you talked, you, you know, you said not going to talk about Jim Moore, you know, not going to give the Jim Moore quote when it comes to playoffs. Jim Moore Senior. Jim Moore Senior, <laughs> correct. <laughs> what is it, Jim L? I forget what he goes by. It's junior know. or Jim L. But <laughs> when you're sitting here three and seven games sure. in and you're in first place in the division, while you may not look at that, as a coach, is that do you have to kind of talk to your players and be like, listen, this is I realize like because it's kind of like yeah, it's not, reality in the it's NFL. Weird. It, well, I mean, it's just a young. I mean, you see it every year. I mean, you see teams that start ten and zero and then they limp in and their season's over. You see teams that you know in 08, I was part of a team we were six and two when we finished eight and eight. You know, you feel like at the midway point you're like, oh, you know, you you assume you're got a real good shot at the playoffs and then you you sputter at the end and that's the name of the game and it and it's it goes back even to last week. You can't ride the roller coaster and feel like you got all the answers if you get a, if you if you win on Monday and relax. And no different, it's not as tragic as it may feel on Monday. You feel awful. Uh, you know, it's not the end of the world either. So a lot of it is perspective and the reality in the NFL. Regardless of the record, is at seven games in or eight games in. I don't know what you're going to call the halfway point. Is it eight or nine? I guess everybody's different. I don't know. It depends on how your brain works. But in all seriousness, like kind of where you're at that halfway point. Um, it never gonna. I mean, the whole, the whole goal is to keep improving, and and we're lucky because we're not. You know, some years you're right. You get down, and a team's running away through your division at six and one. But luckily, we're all in this pack right here, and uh, it's a unique opportunity for sure. But that's the reality of it. You got to be aware of it, and it also gives you perspective. When you say you have to be aware, do you actually talk with the team about it? And that's a, in well, those I mean, the, the, you know, the quickest way into the playoffs is win your division, yeah. and you need to win divisional games. And right now, I mean. Obviously, we didn't against New Orleans or Tampa. And uh, this is a big game, especially at home. Did what they did in Carolina, what they did against Tampa this weekend to kind of come out and shock a few people, is that something that you guys take into account? It's like, hey, this team might have some momentum coming in. Well, I think it just goes back to the same stories. You try to you try to you make sure it goes back to that perspective, like the week to week, you know, the old phrase, any given Sunday, it's the reality of this league can't take anything for granted and it's just another reminder it shouldn't have to be that way but sadly sometimes you you need reminders um, and it's what we do with it I mean they're going to be coming in here they, they should be confident that it's been a good defense in Carolina the last couple of years or they've had a good defense and um, they ran the ball really well yesterday and they were able to get ahead and, and they beat a Tampa team in a divisional game and so you shouldn't need to be reminded that way but <clears throat> Lost the game yesterday and didn't play very well, and they did. But uh, you know, whatever team is able to prepare and make adjustments this week to be ready to roll is who will win on Sunday. 
And that starts today. How does this team, at, at, after um, seven games, at, 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 at turning that page after a win or a loss, like what have you kind of noticed from your group coming Monday into Wednesday? Have they been able to kind of get working again? Yeah, that, that, that hasn't seemed to be the biggest issue. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I was a little, you know, not hindsight revisionist history, but I was a little annoyed last week. I didn't think our focus was great early on. Um, you can ask anybody in that locker room. This isn't me just saying this on Monday because we lost. And you try to rein it back in, and then you're playing a really good team on the road. And uh, So I think for the most part, been pretty good, but obviously wasn't good enough last week. I know you're not a huge fan of the stats thing, but are you pleased when you look at the numbers? Of, are there certain areas you're pleased with what your execution is at this point statistically? I think you, you do look at the progress, you know, and things you've emphasized. and then. But the reality is, like, the defenses are going to adapt too. And we got to evolve, and there's always room for improvement. Whether you're leading the league in a certain category or not, kind of goes with the, kind of your record at the halfway point. To be objective, what are we doing really well? What do we need to keep improving? Uh, making sure that... We're evolving enough where you don't become obvious. And um, yeah, there are some things we've made progress and certainly, and um, you're aware of it. But in a day, right, we're seven games in. What do you think when you watch PJ Walker and when you have seen him in the past, what stood out to you? What, what maybe did you see out of him that maybe a lot of people missed because he wasn't a guy that was, you know. Yeah, I think he's a very tough minded player. Uh, I think, you know, it's, Seems like he's got pretty good pocket presence. Um, I can see why guys would like to, you know, are confident when he's in there. So I think, you know, every week's a different challenge. And certainly a guy like PJ, who hadn't been the easy road for him. But, uh, yeah, we got all the respect in the world for him. You do have an open roster spot, however. It, we do. And yeah, he's got to evaluate with the IR guys. I don't have any update on it right now, whether it's IR or there's. Somebody you bump up, or there's somebody you know. You never know if there's somebody out there you may claim or whatever. So uh, we'll see how the week goes. When you have a, a, a head coaching change in the middle of the year, do you have to change your evaluation because there's a new guy in charge? Or yeah, I think you're gonna see right. They change the play caller too defensively. Right. Uh, have some, you know, gone against Steve Wilkes before, a couple other spots. Uh, Al Holcomb, right? He's calling it. And uh, those guys have been together before. Um, they played them on opening day in 19 in Cleveland. Uh, practiced against them when they were both at Carolina. Uh, they've adapted. They'll have their own flavor on it. But yeah, it certainly changes what Phil Snow was doing to what they're doing the last couple games. And they'll have a different plan for us. Is, well, is, is it a different kind of challenge going to play Carolina when you know they get this big win they have against the Bucks, despite the fact that they traded you know one of the best players in the league, like McCaffrey? Do they feel like a you know, like a team with nothing to lose and therefore present a different challenge for you? I just think it just shows, you know, they're, they're professionals and a lot of times there's perception, there's reality. And, uh, you know, when they go in there and they stuck to their plan, they obviously had a belief and they uh, were able to get out ahead and, and win a big football game. And I think that's, I think a lot of times the outside perception of the truth is, you know, somewhere in the middle about players and star status and whatnot. Uh, and they won as a team yesterday playing good solid football in three phases and um, it, it, it'll be a challenge for us just like it is every Sunday regardless if they've made a coaching change or whatever that their players are going to be familiar with our guys regardless of who's calling the defense uh, you know when you they got a pretty good familiarity with our with our at least our own line some of our guys are tackles Chris uh, Kyle OZ uh, Keith Smith you know guys they're familiar playing with there is a that's what happens in your division. You know, you're, that's why you see sometimes there's certain matchups in the division. You're like, how did that team win? Just, they, they got a little more different confidence because they made me know them too well. So that'll be part of the challenge too. With a guy like Drake, after he only gets one target, because he's such a young player and had been such a volume guy. And yeah, so you I mean, have to talk to him a little bit and say, hey, listen. No, because I think that what's, again, what we're, stats can be misleading. It's, yeah, the target, right, to catch it. But, he was the primary on a couple other ones, and the ball didn't go there for no reason. So he knows that, like, like everything. There's things he can do a lot better. There's things I can do a lot better. It's not like he's not getting plays called for him. we got to do a better job of executing regardless of what plays called. And there's a lot of little details that go into it that uh, 
I said we can all do better. But it'd be one thing if you're just ignoring somebody and you're on your call sheet and you're just refusing to even try to get them the ball. That hasn't been the case. But the results are what they are. And so the reality is we get, we got to figure out different ways to make sure everybody's getting involved. So I think it would be a problem if you just all of a sudden were being hard-headed and ignoring somebody and they, they, the players could feel that. Uh, these guys are way more perceptive than anybody ever gives them credit for. That's not been the case. I can do a better job. We can all do a better job. He can do a better job. Um, to make sure those targets or primaries become a reality and we execute better. So something Bobby said to last week was about when it came to Kyle. It was like, yeah, I knew you could give him more opportunities and comfort in the offense. Do you think Marcus is at the point where he feels comfortable enough with maybe Kyle and Drake that those are the type of players that you can sometimes – throw even if they're not as open? Do you yeah. feel like Marcus is there yet? With I do. The I do. It's probably the reason he probably threw that flat as a run alert to Kyle. That was the one I challenged. That was bang, bang on the goal line. I mean, he had a couple options on the play, but if it shows the faith he has, I mean, that's a tough contested catch. And, you know, by the time he had control, obviously he didn't score. Um, you could argue whether he challenged it or not, but I thought it was worth challenging to see if we had control that when it crossed, you know, game a couple inches here there and essentially was a timeout. Uh, but that would be an example of him just saying, like, screw it, I'm going to give Kyle a chance here. And he had other options on the play. Uh, small example, but that would be one of them. Anything else? Following up with uh, Torres' question, what are some key things that you have seen from the Carolina Panthers? Well, I think this is – they've got good defensive personnel. These guys, have, they, they play extremely hard. Uh, they obviously are trying to establish a little bit of a different identity, however that – However that goes, they ran the ball really well yesterday. Uh, you know, they've invested in their offensive line, so I'd imagine they want to get those guys rolling a little bit. Uh, I know Foreman pretty well. He coached him in Tennessee. We had him in camp here last year. He'll be ready to roll, and he's a good back. And it gets into a rhythm, and they can, they can be hard to stop. they got good players. It's the NFL. And they, they you know, were rewarded with a win yesterday, and they should feel pretty good. And I'm sure they feel that they match up well against us. And, um, like I said, it's a huge opportunity for us Sunday to win another home game, to win a divisional game, and uh, get going here.